This is a beginner guide for Fury Warriors in patch 10.2 and 10.2.5 of Dragonflight Season 3. I promise there's going to be no information overload, but I am going to teach you everything you need to know to succeed in Season 3 for Raiding and Mythic Plus. Let's get into it. Starting with the stat priority, especially as a beginner, do not worry too much about the secondary stats. Your main objective and priority is going to be getting strength and therefore eye level as much as possible and getting a higher and higher eye level. If you do want to delve into the secondary stats, however, this is the priority. Mastery in verse being the top dog, then haste and then some crit. Things like haste do start dropping off after about the 25% mark. And if you are looking to kind of min-max a bit, even as a beginner, you know, that might be what you find is fun, then I would always recommend to sim your character because the weighting of different secondary stats can change depending on your percentages. If you don't know what the hell simming is, or it sounds like I'm just talking a load of nonsense, then do join my Discord where I have a complete guide on how to simulate your character. If not, then like I said, just work on getting a higher eye level, improving, and getting strength, which will come with eye level. Regarding talent points, this build on the left is going to be for raiding and single target, and the one on the right is for Mythic Plus and AoE. I'm not going to go through every individual talent point, because again, information overload for beginners, but I am going to put an import string down below in the description. Don't worry, however, I am going to go over the core and important ones when we go through the rotation. I do recommend, once you're more used to the rotation and you've had some practice, come back, look through all the individual talents and spells in your spellbook, just to see that how it all works together and everything that you have actually got at your disposal. But let's start looking at some of the important ones. Those, of course, are going to be our cooldowns. Starting at the top, we've got Rallying Cry, which is going to give party members 10% more health temporarily, boosting up how much they can endure in battle. Second on the right, on the top, we've got Enraged Regeneration. This is going to reduce your damage taken and your Bloodthirst spell, which is a spell we're going to be using a lot, and it generally is going to regenerate a little bit of your health. Well, Enraged Regeneration is going to make it restore a lot more health when you use it. More on that in a bit. We've got Spear of Bastion, which is going to deal damage to enemies, but the main thing it does is that when you actually use it, it's going to root them in place where they stand, meaning it's a really effective way of crowd control. But it is a big cooldown, so we can't use it too often. We've got Avatar, which really simply transform into an Avatar, Colossus doing 20% more damage, and then we've got Recklessness, increasing your Rage Regeneration, which is the Warrior's main resource we're going to be generating and spending, and it's also going to increase your Critical Strike. Now let's look at some of our utilities. At the top then again, Battle Shout, increasing the party's attack power by 5% for an hour. This is similar to Arcane Intellect from Mages, increasing Intellect, or Power Word Fortitude on Priests, increasing Stamina. It's the same sort. Party-wide buff lasts for an hour. Hamstring is a melee ability we can use, which is going to slow the target by 50%. Again, not totally incapacitating them, but slowing them by 50. Hummel, on the bottom row now, is our interrupt or kick, as it's otherwise known. If you've heard people using the word kick, you don't know what it means. That is when you can interrupt spellcasting. Just another word for interrupting the mob you are fighting. Heroic leap, you can leap to the target location. It can actually go quite far. It's really cool. And then we've got impending victory, which does a little bit of damage, but it's actually going to be healing you for 30% of your health, which is really, really good as a defensive ability. Going into game then, there's just one little thing I would like to show you in regards to kind of utilities and things, and that is just here uh, near my shoulder, and these are our stances. We've got a defensive stance, which uh, reduces all damage you take, but also damage you deal. And then we've got our berserker stance, an aggressive combat stance that increases the damage of your auto attacks and reduces the duration of fear, sap, and incapacitate by 10%. So for damage dealing, of course, we are going to want to be in Berserker stance. Now, I'm at the target dummies, and these abilities up here are the main abilities we're going to be using. If you want to actually import these as they are, just um, copy them off my screen here. This is a really good way that you can actually have your rotation set up. Another thing I'll mention is this weak aura here. And this is going to show all of your buffs and your cooldowns and resources in one central place on your screen so that you can see everything right in front of you. If you don't know what a weak aura is, or you don't know how to install something like this, I do really mean this genuinely. I'm not just saying it. Please do join my Discord because I will help you with anything. Whether it's your UI, add-ons, class discussions and questions, literally anything at 
all. I am here to help. I'm fostering a really great WoW community, especially helping beginners and making WoW accessible in my Discord. We also run dungeons every week together and things like that to help people learn in a safe space where they don't have to be scared of being judged by elitism, etc. So let's actually start off at looking at looking at our abilities. One I am going to move up here is charge. We can charge into battle, generating some rage. You can see here on my Luxos Weak Aura, which is in the description, by the way. And we're generating some rage here. So we can go into battle with that. First up is going to be recklessness then. And we're going to go berserk, increasing all rage gen by 100% and granting your ability to 20% increased crit strike chance for 12 seconds. It's going to generate 50 rage. So we're going to use that on cooldown. So the next thing we're going to want to do is actually become enraged. How fun. <laughs> what, an, what an adrenaline junkie we are. So the way we're actually going to do that is with blood first. If I open my spell book and I move out the way, you can see the buff here, enrage, only up for a few seconds. Becoming enraged increases your damage done by 48% for four seconds. Blood first has a 30% chance to enrage you. If we actually look at our mastery there, you can see that this is unshackled fury. Increases damage done while enraged by X amount based on our mastery. And that is our mastery as a Fury Warrior. We also go into our talent tree. We've got improved Enrage here, increasing your haste by 15% and movement speed, and then improved Bloodfirst, where Bloodfirst's damage is increased by 10%. Now, remember this spell here, which I mentioned, this is the spell that is going to make us go enraged at a 30% chance. So we're going to use this on cooldown to get us enraged. And when we are then enraged, we're going to use Odin's Fury. Unleash your power, dealing damage and additional more damage over four seconds to all enemies. Again, generates 15 rage. And then when we use that, you can see we've got this buff here. This is called Dancing Blades. Odin's Fury increases your auto attack damage and speed by 30% for 10 seconds. Over onto the left, you can see with our avatar cooldown that I mentioned earlier, we've also got Titan's Torment. Activating avatar casts Odin's Fury, the spell we've just mentioned. Activating Odin's Fury actually casts Avatar at reduced effectiveness. So as you can see, we get the Dancing Blades here when we use Odin's Fury, but we also are going to get a few seconds of Avatar when we do um, Odin's Fury. And if I use that, you can see that comes up for four seconds here. And then we've got our Dancing Blades. Now, when Dancing Blades is falling off, we then want to actually use Avatar because that also, remember, casts Odin's Fury, putting Dancing Blades up again and, of course, gives us the full Avatar buff. So in the order you want to use this is, again, using Recklessness on cooldown, using Bloodfirst to get enraged, and when you do get enraged, we then want to use Odin's Fury. And as those buffs are coming off, we want to use Avatar, okay? So we want to use these kind of in conjunction with each other, but be careful of the timing so that we can actually use both of them with as much time as possible. Now, after that, in the priority order, and this is the priority order, order I'm showing you right now, we're then going to use Rampage. This is our Rage Spender. So things like Bloodfirst, etc., are going to generate Rage. Rampage is actually going to be our Rage Spender. And you can see it enrages you and unleashes a series of four brutal strikes, greatly empowering our next two Bloodfirsts or Raging Blows. So when we use this, you can see our blood first actually turns into blood bath. And we're then going to use that when that procs from our rampage. Their blood first goes into blood bath when we use rampage. After that, then on the priority list is going to be execute. You can usually only use it at 35% health. So why can we use it now? Well, that's actually because of this buff here. So if we go into our talents, you can see we have sudden death. Your attacks have a chance to reset the cooldown of Execute to make it usable at any percentage of health. So we're going to use that at this point whenever we can, whether it's target being at 35% health and under, or when this talent has procced it. So that is the priority. After that, then, we're pretty much just going to use Slam and Whirlwind as our fillers. So Slam is the single target one, Whirlwind being the multi-target version. So let's just recap on the total rotation. We're going to go in with Charge. Keep Recklessness on cooldown, use Blood first, and pretty much use this on cooldown as well. We're then going to use Odin's Fury to get our little avatar buff and our Dancing Blades. And when that's coming off, we're then going to use Avatar 
increasing the duration of Dancing Blades and getting the full avatar buff. Use Rampage as our Rage Spender and then use the Bloodbath proc that comes with it and then using Execute after that when we can and using Slam and Whirlwind as our fillers. And that is the rotation. There's one thing I haven't told you about and that is our set bonus. Now that actually does tie in with Odin's Fury, etc. Let's talk about that now and this is it here. So we can see them with the two set that Odin's Fury is going to deal 50% more damage. Wow, we. And it's going to cause our next three blood firsts to also do a ton more damage and have a 100% increased crit chance against our primary target, which is fantastic. Four set then, working back into this, means that the crits that we do get from blood first are then going to help reduce the cooldown on Odin's Fury, which is fantastic. I think Fury Warrior is a really good beginner melee specialization and it's really really fun especially this season i absolutely love it looking then at the mythic plus and more aoe side of things we're not really going to be changing much if i change it over to the mythic plus build here you can see these are the talents that are going to change over and there's only a really main few that i want to talk about here these two up here, Whirlwind causes your next four single target attacks to strike up to four additional targets for 55% damage, and it also generates free rage plus more per hit, maximum eight. And then Meat Cleaver, Whirlwind deals 25% more damage and now affects your next four single target melee attacks instead of next two attacks. So basically then, when we use Whirlwind, it's going to actually make our single target rotation also attack and cleave our nearby targets. So the only change we're actually going to do is basically keep that improved whirlwind buff up in our rotation so that we're cleaving on everything with our core rotation. Another change down here is that we don't have Dancing Blades. We've gone to Titanic Rage. Odin's Fury enrages you, dealing 10% increased damage and grants you four stacks of whirlwind. So that's how that's going to work in there. Um, and that's really the only change in the rotation. Apart from that, there is Thunderous Roar, which is a cooldown that we're going to get in the Mythic Plus build, meaning that um, we're going to roar explosively, doing damage to enemies within 12 yards and causing all of them to bleed over 10 seconds. And that's another AoE we can use there. But pretty much that is going to be it for, um, for Mythic Plus. So it's a really, really um, straightforward rotation, both single target raiding and Mythic Plus, especially for beginners. But like I said earlier, any questions at all, whether it's about this class, Season of Discovery, Retail, Wattalk, Honestly, like literally anything at all. If you've got a law question, <laughs> I'm a huge law nerd. Just join our Discord and we can help you out with whatever it is you need. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you enjoy Fury Warrior? Are you enjoying this season? How are you getting on as a beginner? If you're new to WoW, etc., I'd really love to know. And don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe. If you want to go one step further, you can also, of course, become a member and actually press that join button below to help support me, which then means I can actually put out more videos and, of course, hopefully help you.